approximately 1970, he became a client of mine, and I had a relationship with Jerry for 30 years. Jerry was in the broadcasting field, primarily doing voiceovers, although he did a few on-camera um, presentations. In fact, he even did one movie. Jerry Coffer. There's a place in Boston you should know. A place that brings together all the finer things. It's a place to get lost in, so brilliantly Boston. It's Copley Place. We interrupt this regularly scheduled family barbecue to bring you an important message. All Kingsford charcoals meet all air quality standards set for the L.A. area, so you can keep on enjoying that exquisite charcoal taste all summer long. We'll need to arbitrage the cogeneration transfer excess leveraged assets after a diversified internalized institutional restructuring, then after the immunization of the strategy to fully integrate the online relative value. Nine lives, nutritious foods cats really like, even Morris. The Daniel Coffer Charitable Trust uh, started over nine years ago, and we had the great privilege to work with the trustees of the trust, David Schaub and Daniel Coffer, to help to create a, a mission and a plan and actually execute that plan over the last nine years. Betsy said, the first thing we have to do is create a mission statement. We have to figure out those areas that would make Jerry happy as if he were here today telling us what's important to him. Because the trust really adopted early on a partnership model and a responsive model, we were able during those site visits to really help organizations think about what it was that they needed to critically secure their futures. Our work is doing professional development for teachers so they can work with students to look at history and make connections to their own lives. We're in a partnership with CPS. We are doing a civil rights case study with eighth graders, trying to roll it out across the city, but there are over 400 eighth grades, so it's taking some time. We are optimistic about education moving forward, and particularly in Chicago. We need people to think with us and help us think about sustainability, our capacity, how can we, how can we do so much work with a small staff, particularly now where nonprofits all over are really flat. Family Matters was founded on three principles of leadership and three philosophies. The philosophies are that we wanted to work with the entire family. The second piece is that we wanted to create a sense of community so that whatever program we offered, people really experienced it as it was their organization. The other key component of Family Matters is about creating a safe space, and that is both physically and emotionally, and that is that when people come here that they really experience a place as a place that is free of blame and judgment. We, we plant those seeds of advocacy, we support advocacy, we support people finding their voices, realizing that they can make change, period. It was Betsy who initially asked us to document the principles of leadership, and really it was Betsy who got me thinking that this could be something much broader than Family Matters and that this is something that we really can share with a much larger community. They pushed us by asking us really tough questions and at the same time being absolutely and totally supportive. They really asked us questions that cause us to think, to, to really reflect on where are we most effective? Where can we be strengthened? You know, what is our vision? What's our mission? Does this fit into our vision? How do we evaluate ourselves in ways that, is truly, that are truly meaningful? The JCUA was founded as a, as a Jewish commitment to addressing poverty and injustice um, in Chicago. We work in partnership with grassroots community groups that uh, come to us um, asking for our assistance in helping them with lack of affordable housing, lack of access to quality education, health care, um, jobs. We have a uh, teen social justice program called Orsetic which uh, involves high school teens learning about issues that face the city and finding how they as high school teens and becoming young adults can help make the world a better place. Coffer Charitable Trust brings its own commitment to these issues and that makes our work have greater impact. They want to hear about our programs and they also bring their concerns. How can they help us not just with the, the dollars for the program, but build the organization, really do capacity 
building for the Jewish Council on Urban Affairs so that we can help that many more communities. Merit provides about 600 private lessons a year and about 250 group classes a year here in our West Loop home. We have students who will come in at various points in our continuum. Some start with us in our beginning group classes and then continue on into our intermediate preparatory program where we help them develop the skills that will allow them to successfully audition for our Saturday tuition-free conservatory program, which is our most advanced program at Merit. They come in with an open mind, they're interested in playing their trumpet or their violin or their piano, and they don't realize that as we teach them, they're learning all kinds of other essential life skills. We own many instruments uh, thanks to such generous funding as we received from the Daniel M. Coffer Charitable Trust, which allowed us to purchase instruments and maintain those instruments. The Trust supported Merit's preparatory program for several years, which helped us provide instruction to 250 or more children. The Center was established in 1995 and we're a national civil rights organization and we've grown uh, considerably over these years in part because of the good support we have from the Calford uh, Charitable Trust. Uh, we work across the country to counter the organized racist movement in America and we also do a great deal of community organizing work across the country, particularly in uh, immigrant impacted uh, meatpacking communities. Our uh, community organizers out in Iowa and Minnesota and Missouri have had uh, good success working with local congregations and pastors and leaders in those rural communities to address a range of social and economic and racial justice issues. Well, CALFOR has been a very, very interesting partner with the Center for New Community and, uh, and David and Betsy, Molly, the staff over there have been uh, good friends of ours. I mean, personally and organizationally, they've, they've uh, raised questions with us. They've challenged us in a good way. They've always really uh, sat down with us and had a thorough kind of conversation every year that has really kind of helped us push forward and they've helped us really rethink and think anew about the work we're doing. The Shriver Center is a not-for-profit law office. We use uh, policy research, communications, and diverse forms of advocacy uh, to win positive changes in, in the fight against poverty and to promote opportunity for low-income people and communities. We want to work on issues that begin at least conceptually with people walking through the door with problems. Because we don't have enough of us to do a high volume of direct service here in-house, um, we are careful to have many relationships with people in the community who perform direct service. Legal aid agencies, social work places, health care providers, teachers, uh, community organizers, and we find out from them um, what the issues are in the community. I've always enjoyed uh, the conversations we have from time to time with uh, David Schaub and, and Betsy Brill uh, because they bring to the table a wealth of knowledge from the other people they fund and from their own experience in the world. We started with the idea that, that the play creating a play, creating an original musical about social issues should do more than entertain people. Initially, we went to schools and we performed the plays as a springboard for discussion. And over time, in the process of creating the plays, I discovered that the playmaking itself, the writing of the play, was a really good process to put young people through because their stories would become the stories in the play, they would be the characters. The joy of working with young people is that, you know, especially if you know, we're working with a lot of young people who have been told that they are not successful, that they're failures, that they're not worth anything, and then to take their stories and the stories about people telling you that you are not worth anything and to make a big deal of those, to, you know, to actually see that they are dramatic and that they're worthwhile. We not only do the program, but we sit on groups outside of the program that promote the welfare of, you know, court-involved girls and, and, you know, we're just doing a lot more, I would say, big picture stuff. And I think a lot of it's from just the questions that Betsy and David ask, and, and the fact that they are so supportive, they come to everything. You know, you turn around, there they are. The Enterprising Kitchen is a nonprofit social venture. Our mission is to empower women in Chicago to reach economic self sufficiency. And we do that through a transitional employment, job training, life skills program 
that is embedded within the manufacturing of natural soaps and bath products. The women who come to the Enterprising Kitchen are referred to us from social service agencies throughout the city. They spend six months with us participating in seminars on life skills, job search skills, and they also work in all facets of the operation. The support provided by the Daniel M. Coffer Charitable Trust has been incredible. It's been directed towards helping us grow. We have been able to use the support for training staff, making ourselves more adept, more nimble. We have used it to provide advanced training to our participants. And in the final years, we're now looking at how it's going to help us become more sustainable. The Women Employed is almost 37 years old, and it started in the early 70s when a small group of women came together and thought it was time to do something about the big barriers to good employment that were facing women all over the city. We began by meeting with business executives to make our case that they were missing out on half the talent that was available to them by discriminating against women. And we thought that the power of reason would win out. Uh, unfortunately, it did not. So what we had to do was go to the federal government and insist that the equal opportunity laws, which were already on the books, be enforced against sex discrimination. As our relationship with Coffer developed, they took an interest in how an organization that's really an advocacy organization and can't necessarily count the number of people who get services or get an education or whatever, uh, they felt that we could use some help in terms of evaluating our work. For a number of years, uh, we used Coffer support to really codify the way we were looking at our work and measuring our impact. And the improvements we made in all of that with funds from Coffer uh, are still producing benefits for women employees. I had received a call from David and he says, we're getting ready to set up uh, funds and distribute funds and you've got to come up with something because Jerry said if the unions came up with something we were to be given, you know, all cons you know, due consideration. Uh, and the Eureka moment was the Members Resource Center, the Members Center that, that had been talked about during Jerry's tenure on the Boarding Council and had been a dream for 10 years or more. And I thought, my, well, my gosh, I don't know what kind of money they're talking about, but uh, maybe that's a possibility. Maybe that would appeal to Jerry. The trust gave us operating funds to pay the rent for the space and to buy uh, the more sophisticated audio and visual equipment that we needed for the audio studio and the uh, on-camera studio. So it's just been a, a wonderful um, ride for us. Uh, almost a decade later, we're here, we're bigger, we're better than we ever dreamed we would be. Over 30,000 people have come in. We register every person who uses the center. It's a hub of the acting community and it's a support for union actors in Chicago and the Midwest. And David and Betsy certainly gave us critical feedback on what they thought uh, was necessary to run a, 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 a member center that was going to be successful. Ending the trust life is a um, is both sad and extremely exciting, um, and I'd say it really veers more to the extremely exciting side, and that is that now we can really reflect back on the amazing accomplishments of the trust, on the strategic investments that were made on the organizations and the people that were touched. And really, the, the, the heartfelt relationships that have been built, that were enriched over the years, which will live on well beyond the trust life. And it's been uh, a really phenomenal journey. I think that Jerry would be very proud of what the trust has done but I know that he would be very proud of what his wealth has been able to do for all of the people who were not as fortunate as Jerry was during his lifetime. For a number of years, uh, we used coffer support to really codify the way we were looking at our work. They have encouraged us to think big. They really ask us questions that cause us to think, where are we most effective? A funder who funds both direct service and policy work has information about what's going on on the ground, what the problems are, and, and that's gold to us.